In this example, I want to go ahead and discuss the idea of a box model for our HTML elements. And the box model is the idea that an element is more than just the HTML element. Uh, we can set up kind of a surrounding fortress, if you will, uh, that's going to include a couple of items. So specifically, what we're going to look at are three of the surrounding items on an element. And those three elements are going to be the padding, so how much space is around an element. Um, around the padding, there's going to be a border, so we can set up a border around an element. And then lastly, there's margin. And what margin is, is how much space um, you want around your element before other elements could touch it. So what I want to do is I want to take you out to W3 Schools to kind of give you an example of where this would fit in, and then we'll implement it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a browser. I'm going to go to W3 Schools, and I really want the box model is what I'm looking for. And the idea is, is that for any piece of content, so whether it's an image or a div or an article or a section or something like that, any piece of content, we have our content and that's the space that that element takes up. Uh, around that element, we have padding, so we can create space before our border is going to show up. And then once our border shows up, we have margin, and then this is the space that I would allocate to make sure that I don't want other elements pushing up against my content. So this is what's known as the CSS box model, and we're going to hit on all three of these CSS attributes, so the padding, the border, the margin, and then uh, we'll implement that in our HTML. Okay, so skipping back over to Atom, I have an Atom project already loaded. So I have a box model folder, and then I have empty folders for images, style sheets, and web pages. So to start with, let's go ahead and just start with uh, an empty web page. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file as index.html in the web pages folder. Okay, so that's my HTML page. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lay this out with an HTML template. Uh, we might have a nav bar. And then we might have our main content. And then inside of our main content, we might have, you know, a, a section. And then within our section, we want to have some actual content. So our actual content uh, is going to be just a div tag. Okay, so just a really simple div tag. Um, this is going to be our, our div tag that we are going to apply an ID to. And the idea with this ID is then we can set up some styling rules around it. Um, here's going to be our example element. Okay, so that's our example element. And what I want to do is I want to have that example element styled in a certain way. So our title is going to be box model. We're going to link out to a style sheet. So we're linking out to a style sheet. And our style sheet is going to be in our style sheets directory and we're gonna title it master.css okay so here's a new file called master.css and we want to have a style rule for our example element so our example element since that's an ID we're gonna use the ID selector to apply these style rules and the ID selector is going to be that pound sign, and the pound sign is going to allow us to style that example element. So uh, for, for now, just to make sure things are connected correctly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background color to um, blue. And then I also need to save the HTML. And then once I've done that, I should be able to bring up my live server and I can go into that web page and you'll see I don't see anything um, that doesn't necessarily mean I broke anything or anything like that um, because I have an empty div there's no content inside of that div 
then that div is not going to take up uh, any space and it doesn't need any space allocated to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some content in that div. This is an example of the box model. Okay, and now you'll notice that that div has a blue background and it has text in it and now it's taking up some space. Okay, and I can give it a height and width, um, so I can certainly do that. Um, so, for instance, I might want to set the min height to 100 pixels. Okay, and now that div has some size. Okay, so that's what I consider my content. So in terms of this CSS box model, that's our content. Okay, um, padding is really hard to see unless we also put a border around the element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border around the element and just to verify what we're looking at, you can see how there's no border around that that blue. The border is going to show up in black when we do end up having a, a back or, or a border. So I'm going to go ahead and put a border around it and we'll see the border. So now because I have a solid border, I can see that border around it. And because the border is there now, um, now I can actually set up some styling rules to show you what the padding would look like. Okay, and the padding, I always consider everything out to the border part of the element. So I know we're talking about the box model and we're talking about what's the content, what's not. Um, so I consider everything out to the border, so it'll be out to the green edge, part of the element. The margin is outside of the element. Like how much space do I want outside of the element relative to another element? Okay, so we have our border and then we can put padding around it. And we have a couple of options. So you'll notice when I type in padding, IntelliSense is saying I could put padding on the left, I can put padding on the right, I can put it on top, I can put it on bottom. I can just choose padding. And the way I can set up padding is I could say I want 10 pixels all the way around. And why am I not seeing that? I have my styling rule wrong. So they have more padding, but I think I should see my padding here. So that's saved. And the reason we're not seeing um, the padding, so the padding, um, the, the 10 pixels wasn't very obvious, but now that I made it 50 pixels, it's pretty obvious. The reason we're not seeing the padding as something separate is because the background color is blue. Okay, so um, there is padding above the text and below the text. Our minimum height is getting met. So we set the minimum height to 100 and then we're adding an additional padding on the bottom and on the right and on the left of 50 pixels. So that, that's what's ending up happening there is we have 50 pixels to the top, 50 pixels to the left, 100 pixels for our content down to the bottom of the content, and then we have an additional 50 pixels of padding at the bottom and we have 50 pixels of padding on the right. And I, I know it's kind of hard to see in this example. The, the image actually does a better job of explaining what that padding is. But the idea is, is that I can put padding around my content. And then finally, what I can do is I can set margin. So you'll notice how there is some space. You can see that white space on the left edge and on the right edge and on the top of my browser window. And that's what's known as margin. There's default margin built into browsers. And the default margin is there so that your web pages look nice in browsers so it doesn't go edge to edge. Um, I just want to show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead and say, I don't want any margin. So I'm going to say, I want margin equal to zero pixels. And now, um, even though I'm saying I want margin of zero pixels, uh, what the margin of zero pixels is indicating is that I want zero margin to the next element, the next element being the body. 
So if I really wanted to clear that out, I'd have to set the body's margin to zero. Okay, and I, I don't typically want that, um, but a lot of times you'll see designers, so people that whose job is to write CSS, a lot of times they want all of the browsers to, to look the same way. So when a page renders, it should look the same across all those different browsers. So they have this concept of zeroing out all of the browser defaults. So they just remove all the browser defaults and then add their style rules. So one of the browser defaults that would look different is the amount of margin that's built into a browser for the body. So a more relevant example is what if we said our margin is going to be 100 pixels on each side? So now you'll notice that I have a top margin of 100, a left margin of 100, a right margin of 100, and a bottom margin of 100. And the bottom margin doesn't necessarily come into play here, but now I have spacing from the body. Okay, uh, With all of these attributes, we can change um, individual components. So I mentioned padding. So this is 50 pixels of padding all around on all four sides. Same with margin. It's 100 pixels of margin on all four sides. I have the ability to change individual pieces of those things. So for instance, let's say I didn't want the top margin. I just wanted the left and right margin. So I can come through and say I want the margin left to be 100 pixels and I want the margin right to be 100 pixels. And now it's just the left and the right. Okay. Um, padding, same thing. I could do padding right, padding left, padding top, padding bottom. Um, additionally, there is a shortcut for padding and margin. So if I look back at this box model and we can look at some of this, um, you'll notice that it happens here with the border. So with a border, it's saying I want a 15 pixel border that's solid and green all around the element. So we can go ahead and try that. So if I want a border, a 15 pixel solid green border, and I go back over to mine, you'll notice that I have that 15 pixel solid green border that shows up there. Okay, so what's happening there is that I'm giving additional attributes to that border. I'm saying how thick it should be, what type of border, what color of border. Um, same with padding and margin, I can do those same things. So if I go back over to a browser window, and the reason I'm going back over to the browser window is um, if I'm looking at margins, it's important that we know which way they go. So the shorthand is you start at the top, go to the right, then to the bottom, to the left. So we're gonna work around the, the quadrilateral. So in our case, uh, if I'm going to use the shortcut, I'm specifying the margin that I want on the top, on the right, on the bottom, and then the left. So in our case, we wanted zero on the top, 100 on the right, zero on the bottom, and 100 on the left. So let's use that shortcut. So I'm gonna say the margin is zero on top, 100 pixels on top or on the right, zero on bottom, and 100 on the left. Okay, and you'll notice that it ends up having no effect on this. Okay, if I wanted to put margin on the top, that's the first one. So now you'll notice that I have space from the top of the HTML body. Okay, that same concept is going to apply with my padding. So right now, I'm, I'm just kind of using the shortcuts. If I say 50 pixels, I'm talking about 50 pixels on all four edges. Um, with padding, I could set up padding so that I only want padding on the top and left. Okay, so the top is 50, the right is zero, the bottom is zero, and then the left is 50. And that changes the look a little bit. Okay, so you'll notice it kind of shrunk it a little bit so that now we just are dealing with the minimum height because we're not dealing with... Um, the bottom padding, okay? 
So this is what's known as the box model. And the idea here is, is that um, we have an HTML element, like a div or an image or something like that. And then around the image, we're going to have padding. Or around the div, we're going to have padding. So it gives a little space to that element. Uh, around the padding, we have a border. And then around the border, we have margin. And that's the space between our next HTML element that's going to occur on the page. Okay. So I want to use uh, one more example for you to illustrate this box model so we can really kind of get fine-grained with things. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find an HTML element or uh, uh, an image that we can put on our page. So it's the 4th of July, so I want to get a 4th of July image. So 4th of July. Um, And I'm just going to do an image search. Okay, and then here's a firework. Okay, so I'm going to save that image. And I'm going to save it into my box model images directory. And I'm going to save it as firework. It's a JPEG. Okay, so if I look at Adam, here's the firework JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and put that element on my page. So I'm going to divide this section. So I'm going to have a horizontal rule. And then I'm going to have my image. The source is going to be images firework.jpg. And I'm just going to call it my 4th of July image fireworks. OK, so there's my image. And if I go back over to my box model, you should see that image. And right now, there is some height and width to it. Uh, I don't know the exact size of that image. So if I go to my finder window, I should be able to get that information about that image. So you can see it's 300 by 168. So 300 width by 168 pixels high. And what I want to do is I want to put um, some text underneath that image that's exactly 300 pixels. And so I want to border around it. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, some text. I'm going to have a heading. So let's use an H3 tag. So there's my fireworks H3 tag. And I want to skip back over to my browser. So there's the fireworks. OK, and I want that underneath this image and I want it centered and I want a border around it and I want it to be exactly the same width as this image. OK, so uh, in order to do that, I have to style this H3 tag. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the style sheet. I'm going to style that H3 tag. And one way I could do that is I could set the width to 300 pixels. Okay, and you'll notice it doesn't do much there, but if I go ahead and say I want a border around it that's going to be solid, um, and I do some text alignment to center align it, then you'll notice that it's the exact same width as my image. Now, I could have done some other things with this. So for instance, I might want to put some margin around the text. Okay, so I might want to put 15 pixels of margin around my text. And now you'll notice that it's off. And it's off by 30 pixels. And the reason I say it's off by 30 pixels is I have 15 pixels of margin over here on the left, and I have 15 pixels of margin over here on the right. So I'm actually at 330 pixels at this point. Okay, so I have to be a little bit careful about that. So one way I could do that is I could say, well, I really want the width to be 270 pixels. Okay, now you'll notice that it's centered directly underneath the image. And I have 15 pixels of margin on the left. I have 15 pixels of margin on the right. Okay, so um, I could do that with my image. And then I have text underneath it. And right now I am using the margin 
to set up that spacing. If I do padding of 15 pixels, that also accomplishes the same thing. So now I have padding underneath this fireworks image. I got rid of the margin and the padding is taking care of that 30 pixels that we're short. So the div, or I'm sorry, the H3 was 270 pixels. And then on the left and right, I have 15 pixels of padding. So that's another way to do it. Uh, another way to do it, and you'll notice this is off just a little bit. It's, it's like one pixel where it's off, and that's because the border. So if I go ahead and say, I want a five pixel border, Okay, now you'll notice it's even more off. So there's five pixels over here, there's five pixels over here, so that's 10 pixels. Plus I had um, 15 pixels on each side for the padding. So we're at 40 pixels. So really what I wanna do is I wanna say the width is 260 to account for the five pixel border on the left edge, five pixel border on the right edge, and then the 15 pixel uh, padding on the left and the right to actually get this perfect so that it's directly underneath uh, my fireworks image. Okay, so when we weren't setting the, the width of our border, uh, you could see it was off just a tiny bit, and that's because of the width of the border by default is one pixel, and when I don't uh, account for that, that makes me two pixels off. Um, so I, I was two pixels off, and you could see it was a little bit off center. Um, this is actually accounting for it, okay? So it allows me to center things directly under images. But the idea is this whole concept of the box model is important. So you have your element around your element. You're going to have padding around the padding. You have your border. And then around the border, you have your margin. And we're talking about all four edges of padding, all four edges of margin, all four edges of borders. And then there's a lot of different attributes that you can use for the border. So you could have a solid border, you could have a dashed border, you could have different colors, uh, you could have an inset border, um, you could have a double border. Um, but you, you really have to play around with it a little bit to get comfortable with it. Uh, the other thing that's going to be important here is all of these different shortcuts that you could use and kind of understanding the different shortcuts. So I can use the individual attribute to say, padding left, padding right, padding, padding top, padding bottom. Or I can accomplish the same thing by just referring to the padding and giving four different values, one for each edge. And then the same concept comes across for margin. So there's margin left, margin top, margin right, margin bottom. Or I can specify all four of those different attributes using four different values on the right-hand side of my CSS uh, selector. Okay. So this is the video for our box model. Uh, in addition to the box model this week, um, you are going to get into project one. So just a couple of tips with project one. Um, you have one week to complete project one. Project one is really kind of your first big homework assignment where we're really going to touch on uh, our course coding standards. So um, a couple of people asked about our horizontal rules. And I think one of the exercises it mentioned to create a horizontal rule and it didn't have this closing forward slash. It was just, you know, the horizontal rule um, or alternatively a break tag where I don't have the closing forward slash. Uh, for this course, for these course coding standards, um, you do want to include the closing forward slash. All tags should be self-closed, okay? So for project one, we're going to enforce the coding standards. And project one includes five web pages. They're due one week from today. So um, it'll be July 11th at the end of the day. I set it up for 11.59. Uh, that's the assignment due date. And project one is going to be similar to what you need, what we've done in the past with regards to organizing our project. So you're going to have a project one folder, you're going to have some images, you're going to have a style sheets folder, you're going to have a web pages folder. The images that you need for the first project are available in the project one folder on Blackboard. So all of those images are included. 
the style sheets for project one. Uh, there's no styling necessary for project one. That's going to come project two, project three. So project two and project three are going to build on project one. Um, so your style sheets, uh, you don't have to do any styling for project one, but the structure for your project should be here. And then your web pages is going to include five different web pages. Okay, so the top level web page is going to be your index page, and then you're going to have four sub pages underneath that, and you're going to link to those pages from the index page. Okay, there's uh, a sample page, a sample site in the project specifications. The project specifications are quite long and detailed, so my suggestion to you is take a look at that project and get started right away. Uh, as you run into problems, don't spend 24 hours trying to resolve a problem. Uh, by all means, contact me uh, to, to resolve the issue as soon as you run into the issue. So uh, I want you to have some stick to and I want you to be able to do some of the work on your own, but I don't want you getting stuck for any length of time. So if you get stuck, you're working ahead, you want to be diligent about getting the homework done, uh, by all means, you know, contact me. The other thing is don't put it off to the last minute. So the project specs are 20 pages long. A lot of it is just wording, but I don't want you to put it off until the last minute. So you have one week to complete it, get started on it right away and see where you're getting stuck and that'll make your life a lot easier.